Hello everyone and welcome to another exciting episode of The Legal Anchor. Today we're here in the sunshine state of Portmore and what better place to be to discuss marine environment and environmental law than right here at Helsha Beach. So join me as we understand the intricacies of environmental law and how the marine environment has been impacted by the actions of man so the laws that have also been formed as a result to try and lessen all of these impacts so join me as we now go to look at Helsha Beach and how it's been impacted yeah. welcome guys we're back at Helshire at it's a beach you guys today and we're both lawyers and one is a maritime lawyer with environmental law I'm Jeremy Reed. Stuart Okay, great. Uh, so, can you tell me how your job kind of overlap? Because they're both maritime, both about water, both about environment. Can you give me a little bit more about your jobs and how it impacts Jamaica? Because at the end of the day, we are Jamaica. We just learn a little bit more about how it's impacting our everyday life. So, since um, we've already known Mr. Reed, can we give me a little bit more? Um, I'm a legal officer at DEPO, um, and the one that is currently I deal with all um, with sustainable development as a DEPO. So, um, my mandate is sustainable development. Sustainable means that we need to develop the country while protecting the environment. So, we have to accept that we're using the country as resources. We're using the beaches, we're using um, the mountain sides, we're mining, we're doing all these things. So, as you do it, you have to do it in a way that. Like, it can be done for the next 100 years, 200 years, and then one day of the mention from it. So I mean, my job really is across the island. I, I, I protect the land here Which is it pretty much similar to what Marsha would. Marsha would focus on the land. No, it's not on the sea. Sorry, my bad. Yes. Okay, so um, in regards to that, how do your two jobs, I know it's very similar, but how do they overlap? Because sure. Well, the majority of pollution in the in the seas come from land. So with it being land-based, we have to ensure that we have robust laws on the land to ensure that we also protect the sea. A uh, lot of people have the view that the ships are the major form of pollution to the sea, when it's not. It is land-based. It's the runoff from um, sewage. It's the gullies that drain straight into the sea that unfortunately people throw their rubbish in and it drains into the, the sea. We see it when it rains. The Kingston Harbour is just filled with rubbish and it's because the gullies are draining into the sea. Equally we see it from the farmers. When the farmers are doing all of their agriculture and they use the toxic chemicals that then drain into the rivers and then the rivers drain into the sea and then it also causes the, the pH level of the sea to get higher and many of the marine species cannot live in such a high pH. So we see that the uh, marine law is very important but as Mr. Panton has pointed out, the laws of the land really are very important when it comes especially to marine environment to protecting the sea. Do you think people have a hard time adhering to it because like, you know, just driving through the cell phone, we throw a garbage generations to come. So do you find it very challenging at Nepal to enforce the basic laws so people to understand that hey this will affect you and your children to come? Um, well that's enforcing the laws is, is it's really the biggest issue is public anything. Yeah. That's what that means. Because the truth is um, when you talk about somebody throwing off garbage or people throw garbage because they don't understand the impact it has. Somebody else will get it on. It will, it will get picked up and go somewhere else. And that is where the biggest issue lies. I mean, truthfully, though, I, I can't come in one slide. We know the effort itself does not really have to do with garbage. Oh, okay, that's good to know. 
have to protect the country for generations to come. and all our beaches yeah. um, are governed by the beach control. Okay. Beach control actually is um, one of Nepal's regulations. Uh, uh, we are the beach control authority and what may be said that beach control will access to that. Any form of development on a beach requires a license from, from the beach control. Right, right, right. So for anybody who is there, the enjoying the environment or no? <laughs> yes. It, it, it just bo bonding. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, okay, um, you're going to put on a pilot. You want to put up uh, um, well, on your oh, okay. groin. groin. That's a groin. So right, right. you want to erect a groin on the beach. Um, you have to put them to them. What is the groin? So the groin is you can see to the background. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, the sand between, not a sand, bear with you. So, you have sand between, you can see sand moving up and down. The will block some of the flow of the water. Environmental perspective, we say stop the environment. And that's just from an environment. Right. Fisheries, 
Beach areas act, as he made mention of, of how the beaches and everything are to be managed and governed. I believe that, that came out in 1956, around that time, and around, from that time they've been trying to ensure that we protect the beaches. Unfortunately, Helche is a prime example of when the beach falls into ruin, because many of us are old enough to remember when this beach went further out and you could play football on the beach. I remember as a child coming here. This, went further out and people were playing football, horse, back riding used to go on here. And now we see none of that, those activities can happen here. And it seems like we probably have lost that for good. I don't see it coming. I mean, maybe, I don't know if Mr. Panther can fill me in, but to me, it seems like we probably lost that for good. And all we can do is ensure we try to have enforcement on other places to protect the, so the other parts of our island don't fall into yeah. this. This is, a, this is an example of not paying attention to we And we need to know now that we have to pay more attention to our beaches, exactly. So, so the Mar and the Maritime Areas Act speaks to the various zones and how we have control over them. So this is part within territorial limits. So therefore we have a lot of control over what happens in this space. So as a result of that, we can do more to ensure that our beaches are prob properly protected and the areas within, that fall within the territorial waters. So the, the ocean floor, for lack of a better word, within the territorial waters, how we protect our coral reefs and all of those things fall within the mandate. So yes, our jobs overlap quite easily. Yeah, I, yeah I've learned a lot today. Thank you so much for meeting you guys. I hope you enjoyed the episode and it was very fortunate for me. I really do hope you learned a lot. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you. As it relates now to even more to do with us here on the local scene, we see a lot of things going on here in terms of at Port Royal, there's development there, there's when you drive along downtown, the stretch near Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we see they're also doing expanding the roadway. So we know that that's of course is going into marine because I drive past that every day and I see where they're going into the marine, the environment, that they're basically destroying a beach to rebuild it. So, I mean, it's of course all for greater good, the nation's good, but how does NEPA ensure that all of this is done in upholding the standards that we need to uphold the standards? Well, all right. So this is one of the ways you now in which NEPA and the Maritime Authority are very closely together. Yes. So, um, NEPA is the Beach Control Authority, and in that way, what we ensure is that oh, that we actually have divers who go out and they inspect all the um, so, for Port Royal, for example, when Port Royal is being erected, we, the Maritime Authority, would come to us and say, look, we want to do this development right, guys, Port Royal, guys, guys. we want to... See, there are oysters as well, speaking. <laughs> Once again, to the folks of the Marine, very important. No, we don't know oysters right now, but that's very important to deal with maritime law. So, yes, we will also be touching on that, how the Marine species, right. we can also touch on that topic. Thank you, boss. Yeah. Yes. Funny enough, oysters are filled up, so it's yes. bad, the oysters are bad. But that's a different um, topic. However, um, when Maritime Authority says that we want to put up a cruise ship here in Port Royal, we have to go there, we have to inspect the seafloor, we have to see can the seafloor manage that kind of development. And that's where NEPA will come in play. Um, they, we have, NEPA has issued several licenses for the jetty, for, um, oh, I can't remember the other. Uh, license up. Well, we have issued several licenses um, which will govern you know, the use of the beach, how the ships come in, and the other thing that's important as well is the Marpole Convention. Yes, I know you're yes. from here. Yes, Marpole is one of the most important ones so because Marple, even the pollution from the ships. Exactly. Yes. So, as these ships come in, it is actually, we have signed the convention, we being Jamaica. Yes. And because we have signed the convention, one of our 
and we are mandated to collect waste from the ships. And Marple actually is six annexes yes. of waste that you have to collect from. Um, I don't remember the specific, but you have oil, you have food, you have uh, gab, uh, hard garbage waste, things like that. Yeah. So while Maritime Authority handles uh, what happens, the type of waste that can come off the ship, when it gets onto the land, the facilities which accept that kind of waste actually require an EPA permit. So okay. what will happen is the NRCA Act will then say, you are going to be storing hazardous waste. You get a, a permit from NEPO that deals with that hazardous waste storage. And that will then allow that facility to continue to accept that waste and move it across the land and so on. It's very interesting that you mention that because the Ballast Water Convention speaks to how ballast is supposed to be removed. Ballast is what is used when the ship is floating to balance off the ship. They take water in and of course the water when it's taken in, it's taken in a foreign port. And when it's taken in a foreign port, marine invasive species have been known to come in. So when these marine invasive species come on, they are now on board that in the ballast tank. And then when the ship reaches to its next to its destination, they may offload some of this water to even out the buoyancy of the ship. When it is um, released, we find that these marine invasive species are now in another country. There's an example of the, um, the lionfish coming into people's territorial waters and causing major havoc on their marine environment. So, the Ballast Water Convention was brought up to address this issue and that there's supposed to be treatment tanks on board on land at the port that would collect the water from the ship and ensure that it is treated properly. So that is important that you mention that. So that would never be the one to see, to see how that water is handled when it comes off or um, no. truthfully. I'm not sure I do believe that's more a maritime authority. Oh okay. um, but mandate. Um, in a way I know that especially because there are invasive species in there and right to listen, we would get involved because we do have to protect our marine species. Uh, but I'm not actually sure who governs ballast water. That's, I can I can find that out. <laughs> yes. We can, yes, that's for another, that's video, for another video. video. Yes, definitely. Yeah. But yes, it's been very interesting because as we know, the marine environment is a very fragile ecosystem and a lot of people don't take it seriously and don't realize how much these laws that are now in place today were put there to protect the environment and to ensure that we have it for generations to come. So with that said, I don't know if Mr. Panton has anything further that you'd want to talk to us about because a very interesting, very knowledgeable attorney at law and very knowledgeable in the area of environmental law, which he has been practicing in for a few years now. Over five years? Over five years of practice, exactly. So, is um, it? yes. Really? I don't know, all I can say is, I mean, to me, Jamaica, one of Jamaica's biggest issues is solid waste. Um, we really just need to be a little bit more sensitive to how we deal with solid waste. The waste will not just disappear, it has to go somewhere. And so we have to try to encourage more recycling. We have to try to, you know, use waste receptacles, throw your garbage away properly because that is what is going to block the drains. That's what leads to the flooding. That's what leads to a myriad of issues from that. And so, I mean, to me, knowing that what, what solid waste is all about, I'd say as much as possible, let's try to govern yourself a little bit more. Don't use reusable as much as you can. I have my reusable mask here in my hand as I say that. Um, because, I mean, this is how you protect the environment. It's a slow step, but if 500 people use reusable masks, that's a much smaller impact than 50 people using a single-use mask every day. And so you have to consider things like that. I mean, that's really all I like. Well, we see in China, interesting also, in China, I was watching on the BBC News, where a latest study out of China has shown that the most pollution in their waters now is the mask. The mask is now coming up to be even surpassing the single-use plastics because people throw, throw them away every day. So we see that it's on the level now, getting up to the level of what our plastics are. So all of us can do our own part in ensuring that we protect this marine environment. That is important to all of us. 
So with that said, thank you very much for tuning in and I look forward to having you again. All right.